continue this conversation, shall we, with Unlimited Fund CEO Bob Elliott, who previously worked on Bridgewater's Investment Committee. Bob, you're here on set with us. It's great to have you. The last time you were on set was two weeks ago. My yeah. God, what a two weeks it, we've it had. It has been a heck of a two weeks, hasn't it? Right? I, I want to get into all of that. But first, just your reaction to this H8 data, this high-frequency data, which is the closest thing we can get to sort of having a sense of the deposits, although not that much since we're talking about the biggest 25 banks. Right, right, right. I mean, I, I love the fact that we're now rolling up our sleeves on a Friday afternoon getting into some bank data, right? Yeah. So for, our, still crazy. for our macro nerds out there, <laughs> this is exactly what we live for. You know, you look at this data and what it shows. When I was here two weeks ago, the basic question was, are the Treasury and the Fed going to do enough to stop any deposit runs out of the small banks? And the reality is they took pretty aggressive steps uh, to respond to SVB, to shore up First Republic, at least to hold it up for the time being, and to create programs that provided liquidity for banks that might be running into trouble. The outcome is what we saw in this data. During the most acute portion of this crisis period, we saw about $100 billion of lost deposits from the smallest banks to the biggest banks. That's not desirable, but that's, you know, a few percent of the total picture of the funding conditions for the small banks, certainly not a disaster. And then we look at some of those other programs, like the most recent, the combination of the discount window, uh, as well as the most recent Fed program. That's been stable for the week since this data was reported. So mm -hmm. it suggests that basically, you know, we had a little bit of a deposit run. It, was, it wasn't a good thing, but things are probably normalizing at this point when it comes to the flows of deposits. So you think the worst is over? I mean, we've been having this conversation, potentially. So we've been having this conversation that with everything we've seen over the last couple of weeks, this is going to tighten financial conditions. It's going to make the banks less, or I guess I should say more reticent to, to lend, and that that in turn is going to tighten the economy and do the Fed's job for it. Do you see it the same way? Well, I think there's, there's real questions about that. I mean, what we, we already saw through the course of the last year, really, Banks had been pulling back their extension of credit. And even before this issue emerged recently, you had banks actually net zero in terms of their lending, both the small banks and the big banks. And you already saw big banks actually choosing to deleverage or bring down their books uh, ahead of this circumstance. Now, could that get a little worse than zero? Could you start to get a net withdrawal of credit? That's possible, but that's probably not a big part of what's going on. And so then you got to look at the other elements of what's going on as a consequence of this dynamic. Uh, since I was here two weeks ago, bond yields have fallen considerably. Mortgage rates are down, which is stimulative of the housing market. And stocks are up. Very important to recognize, mm -hmm. right? Stocks are up since the beginning of this crisis. Mm -hmm. And so it's possible what we're seeing, actually, is a lot of people pricing in you know, some stimulation, some liquidity coming in from the Fed. Uh, which is supporting asset prices in the bond market, and that may be net stimulative, all things considered. That also sounds like they say there's a hurricane coming, but the sky looks so clear, <laughs> so I don't know. But I actually want to take a sharp turn and ask you about international equities. In cases like this, when there's volatility, or not just that, just these weird financial conditions, so many people say, hey, why take risk when you can get this kind of yield in fixed income, stay with dividend payers? And historically, that tends to be not exactly the right advice. Oftentimes, I look back and see there were these moderate risks that were priced very reasonably that people overlooked because they were ignoring extreme risk and, and looking for too much safety. Are there any moderate risks, reasonable risks, that you see in international equities? Well, I think uh, a lot of when you look at what's going on in the, in the equity market in the couple, last couple of weeks is a real flood to U.S. mega cap stocks, right? And I think part of that is uh, possibly those stocks are being perceived as safe. It's also a function of what we're seeing with big levered players like hedge funds who had been very short those positions, right, and, and had, had basically been forced. They got a short squeeze as a function of this tightening, uh, tightening dynamic that was going on and had to delever. And so you've seen that outperformance in the U.S., I think, you know, relative to uh, international stocks. You see the outperformance of tech relative to a lot of other sectors. That's probably not going to be sustainable or durable once that deleveraging slows. And we even saw it at the end of today. You start to see NASDAQ trailing. You start to see the Russell 2K, you know, starting to outperform right here into the close. I think maybe what we're seeing is that that deleveraging that's really helping the tech stocks relative to the rest of the economy, rest of the market, really stop it.